Hey guys, welcome to your pre-match vibes for Brighton versus Arsenal. Make sure you guys get in the chat. Let me know how you guys are thinking and feeling ahead of this game. I am just setting everything up. Just setting everything up. Just setting everything up. You guys are like, shut up. What is the lineup? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so let me just make sure I'm ready for everything. Um, what we're going to do today is obviously like re react to the lineup, get the vibes, you know, how we're feeling, what we're thinking. It's the title race. It is just, I mean, tighter than ever. City won. Liverpool obviously won. So we have got to win. But like, that's like so obvious to say, because like, of course we have to win, <laughs> you know, like. We're at the point now where you literally cannot drop points. So, you know, every game is a final. So, you know, it's really nerve wracking. I mean, it's Brighton. I expect us to win, but also it's Brighton and they're annoying. So lineup just came out. So I'm going to go ahead and show, share my screen. Make sure you guys are in the chat and all that kind of stuff. Sharing my screen with you in five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Um. So like we had kind of spoke about, uh, you know, uh, leading up to this game, uh, I think there is an opportunity, there was an opportunity to maybe like make some changes and these are more changes than I would have expected. Like in terms of like, I would have not expected Zinchenko to start at all. Um, but we have Raya, White, Saliba, Gabriel, and Zinchenko, Rice, Jorginho, and Odegaard. And Saka, Jesus, and Havertz. Havertz starts through the middle. Jesus out wide. Um, i guessing because Mar maybe Martinelli is still not 100% fit. Maybe Arteta is just trying something. Maybe he's trying to see what other options we have out wide, whatever. Just trying to give maybe Jesus some, some minutes. I don't know. Uh, Saka back in the lineup, which is great. Um, you guys know I don't love the axis of Zinchenko and Jorginho. I think it's incredibly slow. And... Easy, easy to bypass, you know, when they start trying, like, it's almost as though, like, Zinchenko and Jorginho both want to do the same things when we're in possession, and neither of them are fast enough or strong enough to, you know, to stop transition, and so hopefully Rice is completely clued in because it hasn't happened a lot this season, but it's just something, like, in the past I haven't loved, so let's see how this works out today, um, and so... Yeah, it this is the lineup. Um, in terms of who's on the bench, you have Ramsdale, um, Tamiyasu, Kivior, uh, Partey, Smith Rowe, Vieira, Trossard, Martinelli, and Enkedia. I know a lot of people kind of felt like uh maybe Emil Smith Rowe had played himself into a starting um a starting position for Brighton. Um, I wasn't quite sold on that just because it's like, listen. He played good against a week in Luton. Great game, but like we have to, have to, have to win, right? Um, Vieira, haven't seen him in a long time. So I'm wondering if, you know, that's just something I'm keeping in the back of my mind, like just like a little asterisk. Like if we were to go ahead, like would Arteta maybe take Odegaard off or take someone else off and give him some minutes? It's getting into crunch time and he doesn't really seem like he's involved. Um, Partey did well t when starting against Luton, but always expected like, you know, Jorginho to play some minutes. Maybe Partey plays against Bayern, you know, who knows, you know, so this is very interesting. Like we have a lot of options. You have good options off the bench to come on and make a difference up front in Martinelli and Trossard. So overall, we're in a pretty strong position. We haven't been this strong in terms of the starting 11 and the bench since the beginning of the season. And so, you know, we just have to get the business done. We literally just have to get it done. Like, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care anything. Like, just get it done. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, Walter says, going to squeeze a quick bike ride in before kickoff back in an hour. Perfect. Um, Chosen One says, Bayern from 2-0 up to 3-2 down. Very similarly to Aston Villa. I'm watching them right over here. And they were up 2-0. And they're now down 3-2 to two against a Tony list. Brentford. Very interesting. Um, Abood says respect to Deserby sold his top players over the summer and still keeping Brighton in the top 
half. This is not going to be like Burnley or anything like that. Brighton do have some some players that can hurt you. They play good football. So I don't expect this to be an easy game at all, um, especially like away from home and all that kind of stuff. But I still expect us to win. Chosen One says, what's up, Jess? I am just ready to start this watch along. You guys know, or if you guys don't know, I've started working with TIFO. They have created a program, a platform just for content creators that want to do watch alongs like me. And so we will be uh, heading to the watch along after this live stream. So this is the pre-match vibes. The link is pinned. The link is in the description. I did a post about it. There's also like the links are also like in the chat. Like I put them in there quite a few times. So I implore you to, you know, copy and paste that link. And then use the code Jessica to join the watch along because it's going to be so much fun. Um, the platform is made just for, for people that want to do watch along. So we're going to have a scoreboard. We're going to be able to sync our times together. Um, you have threads in there as well where you guys can talk directly to each other. So make sure you guys do that um, before you guys uh, get off of here. I would say just go ahead and do it now if you guys have a chance so that, you know, we make sure that we're all here for the watch along, uh, which will start in about 44 minutes. Um, and I just checked the stream now and somebody is already in the chat saying this is so cool. So yeah, I'm excited about the watch along. So hopefully you guys join me. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so we have our lineup here. I'll read it off again for anybody that's, you know, I don't know, like listening maybe and not able to see. Raya, White, Saliba, Gabrielle, and Zinchenko, Rice, Jorginho, Odegaard in midfield, and Saka, Jesus, and Havertz. Martinelli, not starting. Neither is uh, Trossard, obviously, but they still are great options off the, oh my gosh, Wissa just tackled himself. They're really good options um, off the bench, you know. So we have a very good team out here, so we should be, we should definitely be winning this game. Um, I will go over to uh, Brighton as well and um, show you guys their lineup. Um, I honestly haven't watched Brighton very much this season. They just, I mean, obviously, like, they haven't been the most fun to watch because they are not scoring as many goals as they were last season. And I think they've had, like, quite a few scoreless draws this season, you know. So um, they're, you know, obviously still a good side and play good good football, but it's just a, it's a different vibe. Ollie Watkins can get all the way up. The way he just flopped right there is like pathetic. Like genuinely, like have some shame. Um, so here is their lineup. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just like literally so interested in this Brentford game because I would love for them to get something out of it. Um, Verbruggen stops starts in goal. You have Lamptey, Dunk, and CISO, Gross, Motor, Welbeck, Baliba. Andringa, Van Hecke, and Estupinian. So I'm just trying to understand what they're trying to do here. Let me check Fat Mom real quick. Because I don't really know them like that. Um, okay, so uh, Lamptey on the right. Van Hecke and Dunk are the center back partners. Estupinian as the left back. Motor and Baliba in midfield um, with Gross in the Tem. And CISO, who's back from his ACL injury, um, is playing off of the right. Welbeck is obviously the striker, and Adringa is on the left. So I don't I don't know. Like, I don't know Brighton that well. Like, like again, I haven't really been watching them enough. So I don't know if this is, like, what would be considered a strong lineup for them or not. Um, I know that, like, Gross is one of their best players. Welbeck is a good striker. Um, you know, Dunk and he Ben Heke, I think, is their starting center back partnership. As Dupignan is a good player. I don't know about this double pivot in midfield, Motor and Baliba. I'm I'm not sure about them. I know Baliba is kind of like a newish player, a youngish player. I'm not sure about Motor. So you guys can let me know if you guys if you guys are more um, knowledgeable than me on that. But oh my gosh. Brentford just conceded like losers to Ollie Watkins. They are so pathetic. I cannot believe that just happened. How did the goalkeeper not get that? 3-3. Three, three. So you know Aston Villa are going to go on to win now. Uh, Lucas says uh, Gilmore is a big miss. Adub says, or sorry, Abood says, shit and CISO is scary when he's at his best. 
Um, Frederick says, did Harry Kane score in the Bayern game? That is ongoing. Harry Kane has been 100% this season. Honestly, I don't know. Like, um, last time you guys were letting me know that it's 3-2. So I'm not sure. I can check right now, actually. Um, let's see. I can just already tell Brentford are about to fucking crumble. Okay. Um, let's see. Bayern. Yeah, Harry Kane scored the first goal for for Bayern, which is the first goal in the game. Lucas says Baliba is a Caicedo replacement. How far is a, away is he from being a good like Caicedo replacement? Because obviously, like Caicedo was really good when he left. Um, you know, I think he's a like what Baliba is like a young player. So how close is he to actually being like a legitimate Caicedo um, replacement? Sam says, to be honest, I'm not a fan of Jesus. Or Zinni. I hope we are resting Kivior and Martinelli for the Bayern game. You know, like, I feel like the feeling on Jesus and Zinchenko has changed quite drastically. Um, maybe not so more with Zinchenko. I think people were genuinely done with him um, after the run in last season. And then since Jesus has not really been available this season and Kai's been playing well, like the, the tide has kind of changed on him as well. I wouldn't say that I'm not a fan of either one of them. I would just say that like, they really have not been that great this season. Um, I stand 10 toes down on feeling like Jesus has had what I would consider a poor season by his standards, not being available. And when he has played beyond the champions league in the Premier league, he's been hit or miss, um, very hit or miss. And, Oh my gosh, Brentford are so about to give this up. Like genuinely, they may they're gonna leave with nothing. They're gonna leave with nothing. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, you know, they're neither of them are in my start, my my best eleven. And at the beginning of the season, it's just it would be, I feel like more difficult to see two, the two of them on the outskirts of the, the eleven, so much so, you know. So um I kind of get what you're saying. But it is important for them to get some minutes now because we are going to need them. I think Zinchenko and Jesus are still important parts of the team, just not starters um, right now. So, yeah, I think um, it's a little too soon to be just calling time on them. You know, uh, Igor says having Eddie on the bench and not Nelson is a bad decision. Is it? Um. This may like this is probably probably an unpopular opinion, but I think neither of them offer very much. So it's neither here nor there, in my opinion. Like you're swapping one guy that's not good enough for another one that's not good enough. Um, um, oh wow, Ben White already a hundred appearances for us. That's insane. Um, yeah, so like I'll be honest, like I just I don't think Reese Nelson or Enkedia can offer us a lot right now. So it's kind of like you have Trossard and Martinelli that can come in on the wings. So, I mean, is it really like Reese Nelson is going to be missing or, you know, felt like his presence is going to be felt probably like his lack of presence is going to be felt. No, probably not. So to me, like both Eddie and Reese are kind of like, just pick one, you know, just pick one. Um, you know, uh, Jordan says, guys, <laughs> What up? <laughs> Lucas says, uh, Lam T and Estupinian can make errors off the ball. M says he means for reference and reference to Saka breaking down. I mean, but it doesn't, it still doesn't make a difference. If Saka doesn't, it can't make the full 90, then you just move Jesus to the right and you bring Martinelli on. Or you put Martinelli on on the right and you bring Trussard on for Jesus. Like, genuinely, Reese Nelson and Enkedia are really like to me like the level that they're at is so it's like like I would prefer to play Jesus or Martinelli off of the right instead of him instead of Reese so I, I genuinely don't think that like he's a big miss at all and I don't think it's a mistake like I what is what is Reese Nelson about to do you know he had a really good chance against Luton and it wasn't that he was awful but it was a forgettable performance like genuinely so yeah I feel like yeah, I feel very like confident saying that that like it's not really a big difference. Um Lucas says hopefully Wolves still have all their attackers out against us. Sammy says not a fan of Jesus on the left to be honest. Uh Tawana says this, the level is low. Jagoon says Nelson is still better, the better of the two. I mean, it's 
it's it's really not like being better than Enkedia by a, like a small margin. I mean, at least Enkedia scored goals in the Premier League. Like Nelson hasn't like I don't know. Nelson scored the 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 goal against Bournemouth and it's had some bright moments, but I do think that like just Eddie's stocks are very low and that's a big part of like Eddie is just not liked where Reese Nelson still almost has like this weird glamour around him where it's like, yeah, but if he had more minutes, he would, he would do something like they're genuinely on the same level, you know, whether Reese Nelson is just like two, 2% 2 better. They're still really like kind of lower on the levels. Um, Tawana says Trossard or Jesus right wing. I don't want to see Martinelli there. I wouldn't, the thing about playing Martinelli on the right is that you can't play him like, um, like Saka. You, you just, you have to do something different. And I don't necessarily feel like we do that. I feel like Martinelli comes on the right and we expect him to do the exact same things where we know he's our space, like our space guy. You have to hit him in behind. So, and Saka usually gets ball to feet, uh, you know, so uh, he can play on the right. I've seen him play on the right and score goals. Um, but yeah, it's, I'd still rather him than, than Reese, <laughs> you know, um, Micken says, I really wish we had a pacey backup winger that likes to take a defender on and add a bit of variety. We are lacking some pace. Like um, Abud says, we're lacking pace. Um, it's how the team was built. You know, Arsenal will probably hopefully address that in the summer. But, you know, um, what can you do now? We have Martinelli and that's pretty much it in terms of like our pace. So, Let's see how we deal with it. But, you know, Kai at least being able to run into space has helped a little bit, I think, making us a little bit more two-dimensional, three-dimensional in the final third. But, yeah, we are lacking pace. That's that's definitely for sure. Uh, Tawana says, to maximize Martinelli and his game, he needs to be on the left. Yeah. Um, Mata says, let's bring Pepe back. Um, Sam says, Zinni said he would fight in Ukraine. Do you think players should discuss politics? Um, I, I actually don't think that you can, first of all, you can't stop somebody from saying how they feel. It's, you know, you, you have, you have agency over what you want to say. So saying that he shouldn't be able to speak about something feels a bit like, okay, what are, are we stopping him from saying something because we don't like what he's saying or because we don't want politics in the game. You can't remove politics from football because there's money involved there's, you know, government, there's so many things involved in football that are not just about the game. So I think it's actually like impossible not to have politics involved in, in football in some capacity. And so like genuinely, like, is it just that we don't like what he's saying or do we not want people to speak about politics at all? Because I feel like if he was saying, you know, like, you know, it was saying something maybe pro-Palestine, people wouldn't care that he was saying that. Do you know what I mean? So it depends on who, what you're saying. So it's either all of it should be out or all of it should be in, in my opinion, you know? So, um, and the, the other thing about like Zinchenko that I still pe feel like people don't understand or not really taking into consideration is that this is somebody who grew up in the Ukraine. He's Ukrainian, you know? So for you guys, like, I feel like for some people to think that he's going to have views outside of what he's already said is a little naive. He's literally from that place, you know, and he's in a, like, his family, friends are in a war-torn country. I don't know what else you expect him to say. So either you want all of it out, you don't want any footballers to say anything about anything political or anything like that, or you accept that people are going to have different views and you're going to have to hear them whether you like them or not. And if you don't want to hear them, you can stop listening. You know, I just feel like people are a little bit disingenuous. It's about what he's saying, not the fact that he is speaking. Um, it's it's just that simple, in my opinion. Um, Brentford are 100 percent giving this up. Um, so yeah, the Arsenal perspective says to say there's no politics in football or there should not be is naive in my humble opinion. I mean, no insult or disrespect by my comments. No, I, and, uh, um, Mata says, Hey, what's the referral code for the watch along? It's Jessica. And it'll always be Jessica. My name just spelled out J E S S I C A. Um, but yeah, like I do think people just, it's, 
it only becomes a problem when people are saying things that people do not like or is not a part of the popular opinion. So nobody ha really has an issue with anybody saying anything pro-Palestine or something like that. Like everybody's okay with it because a lot of people like that is the common view, right? Um, but if you say something that's against that, then all of a sudden we don't want politics or we want them gagged. You know, we don't want them speaking anymore. And so for me personally, I accept that people have different views. That's that's how I live my life. I'm I just for, for me personally, like I don't live in Zinni's shoes. I don't know what it's like to have family and friends in a war torn country. So I'm not even going to pretend to act like I know how he's feeling. So I'm also not going to judge how he's expressing himself. And if I don't like how he's expressing himself, I'm going to ignore, mute, whatever. Um, that's just how, how I have to be. Um, it's just, it's too complex, in my opinion, because we're not there. Most of us are not there. Um, the Dude Diary says, good lineup. I trust the starting 11 to get the job done before the subs. Hope so. Um, we had a day to kind of do some admin against Luton midweek. We were able to rest some legs, like Saka didn't play. Um, Jesus didn't play. Jorginho didn't really get a lot of minutes. So beyond like the people in the back line, like the main three, a lot of people have gotten like some rest, like even Rice got some rest. So, you know, I expect them to be fresh and ready to go, you know, so it is a good lineup. It is a good lineup. And um, hopefully they get the job done. I, th I mean, listen, you have to like you ain't got no choice. Like, you know, you have no choice but get to get it done. Um, so, yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Johnny D says, I don't know why we're talking politics. I don't think Brighton cares about that today. I think it's just like somebody asked me about it. So I just, you know, at least wanted to acknowledge the comment. Um, but yeah, like we're playing today and it's such a massive game, right? Um, such a massive game. Uh, every game is going to feel absolutely massive from now until the end of the season. Like we could be playing freaking Tranmere and it would feel like the Champions League final, wouldn't it? You know, so yeah. Um, D Smooth says, why do you want Villa to lose? Don't we need both Villa and Spurs to be solidly in that place for the last UCL spot by the time Liverpool pull up to face them both? Otherwise, no chance they'll help us. I actually don't think they'll help us at all, to be honest. Like, I don't think that there's anything that's going to happen before, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't count on Villa or any of these teams to do anything for us. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, Villa went to the Etihad and put out a weak, weak, weak lineup. Like, so I don't expect them to do anything for us. And when I watch Man United, um, Aston Villa, and Spurs play, I just hope all the teams lose. I genuinely don't care. Do you see what I'm saying? So, um you know, the top four race is what it is. I want all the teams to lose. It's funny watching them drop points or whatever, but I don't expect any of these teams to help us. I don't hold my breath for it um, because we just have to focus on what we're going to do. That's that's genuinely how I feel. Um, so, yeah, uh, Delhi says, just please respect Partey. We saw against City, our sixes aren't as comfortable when being pressed like that. Arteta himself says nobody in the squad can do what Partey does. Stop understating him. I don't understate him. He's always injured and he's not reliable. That's mostly what I've said. Um, and th that's true. So if you think I'm under, under, you know, it's like you guys don't listen. You genuinely don't listen. And it's just like, I don't know what to tell you at this point. I've said so many times that he's, he has elite qualities. He's a unicorn. Like he's so good on the ball. Like, you know, I've said all that. Like, what else do I need to say? He's not available and he's always injured. What is that a lie? Like, it's genuinely not. You guys don't listen. So, and I'm not going to blow smoke up a player that has been genuinely probably a very underwhelming signing, <laughs> you know, for a major signing. He's never available and he doesn't show up in the big game. So not, not consistently, um, you know, so I, I don't like, why can't you guys just accept like, you know, it's like, just accept the truth. Like just accept the truth. Um, it will set you free. Genuinely. Uh, Johnny D says uh, Spurs and Villa both have CL places secured Villa. Um, Villa chatting, um, playing with reserves in attack against City exposed today. I love it. Um, let's see. Uh, Arsenal perspective says, "Come on, guys. Problem with Partey is its injury record." And of uh, that's pretty much that's that's basically what it is, and it's a big issue. Like because people have 
such like energy for Zinchenko and Jesus and these guys that are always injured and they are, but he just gets treated different. And I don't really understand because he's been here longer than them. He's missed more games than them. And he's had more clangers too. Like, you know, so it's kind of like, I don't know. I just, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Like <laughs> good player, never available. Um, Abood says we, I need Zuba Mindy in our squad next season. I just need um, Brentford to get serious. I feel like they're about to bottle it right now. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, Zuba Mindy would be a good option, right? He's a good player. Um, you know, obviously, it all depends, I feel like, on who else becomes available this summer. Um, you know, if, like, if Frankie de Jong is available, you have to look at that, you know? So, depends on who else is available. Depends on how much Zuba Mindy actually wants to leave Sociedad. Um, but I feel like there's, we think some like something specific is going to happen in the summer. I can see things changing, you know, depending on which one of Jorginho and Partey stays, maybe both of that, like, let's say both of them stay, then maybe you go for a more attacking midfielder. If Jorginho goes, you get a deep line playmaker. If Partey leaves, maybe you go get somebody that's a little bit more athletic. You know, if, uh, somebody like a really good winger comes on the market, maybe you go get Sesco instead of, Yokaris and get like that high quality winger and you know there's so many different things that can happen so i'm excited for this summer sammy says uh you've probably done this before but please discuss your football history i'm really curious um i used to play when i was younger and so like I was weird because like a lot of other girls didn't actually like watching the game but like instantly when i started playing i was like obsessed like genuinely obsessed with the game. And so my mom found games for me to watch. And so we watched MLS, we watched the uh, Liga MX, we watched um, the U.S. women. Like I love the U.S. women. Um, like their game is also um, on at the same time as uh, our game, which is distressing me very much so. And so uh, my mom found some Premier League games for us to watch. And so like the first game I watched was a – um, Man United game. Then we started watching Arsenal. Arsenal became our team, you know, so that's, that's kind of where it started. I played all the way through college. Um, I wish that I would have been more aware of the opportunities to play professionally overseas. I probably would have done that, but you can't cry over spilled milk. Like I didn't get a chance to do that, but now I get to work in the industry and it's amazing. Um, and yeah, I'm happy at the where I'm at. Um, Sammy says, Douglas Louise got a yellow. Does that mean he misses the game against us, or is he on nine now? Um, uh, the Arsenal perspective says, Louis, Lu, um, Douglas Louise will miss the Villa um, Arsenal game, um, so we have to check that out. But that's a huge miss for them if he's not there for our game because he's probably one of their best players, so hopefully he is missing. Kwame says, what position did you used to play? Um, so... I used to play midfield and I mean, I didn't know what it was called at the time, but I was more of like the defensive midfielder. And then in college, I played a lot of right back too. So I got slowly moved to the back, you know, cause your girl wasn't the most, like, I wouldn't say I wasn't super technical. I would just say that like genuinely I was very fast and athletic and I was not nice to play against. So the defensive position suited me a lot better. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I was at. Lucas says, yes, 10th yellow for him. Well, he's out, which is, that's good. But we have to focus on Brighton first. Because um, if you don't beat Brighton, then it doesn't matter. Um, I want to look and see what people are saying on the timeline. Um, let's see. Oh, did Wolves score? Sammy is saying, Wolves, did Wolves score? That'd be good for the narrative. I'm not going to lie. I don't like anybody but us. So anytime, like, I like when other teams lose. Like, I don't know what to tell you. So, like, or drop points. Like, you know, so West Ham not doing well. Great. Spurs not doing well. Great. Um, everybody, you know. Um, Lucas says he'll be offside. So maybe this goal will not stand. Um, the Arsenal perspective says right sided center back, always my position. Center back is such a difficult, I think center back is a really difficult position. I always, um, oh, they're going to say he was um, blocking the goalkeeper's sight line, right? Yeah, they're going to take that back for sure. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, 
bond servant says, did you ever get sent off? Um, yes, I did get sent off. Um, but not for the reason why you probably uh, think I got sent off. I got sent off because I, um, said the F word on, um, on, on the pitch. I, and I didn't even say it to somebody. I said it just to myself. Um, I was like, something happened and I messed up and I said, what the fuck? You know, something like that. And the referee sent me off for it. So, yeah, I don't really understand what, you know, why I got sent off. Like, I didn't really understand it. I was like, are you serious? Um, you know, but yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, I never got sent off beyond that. Um, I probably should have been sent off a couple of times, but for some reason, I always got away with it. Um, let's see. Uh, Colleen says we need to take revenge for several years of hurt there, there for the taking for the taking. Colleen is talking about, I think, Byron. Um, Matt Candela saying that Douglas Louise does miss the game against us after being booked. So, um, that is a huge miss for them. Um, oh, my U.S. women. Sorry, I just need to look at this real quick. Arsenal player Emily Fox will be starting for the U.S. women today against Japan. Um, so yeah, and I want, I just, I want to say this as well. Like, um, let me just get the lineup up there just one more time, because I know people are probably just trickling into and they're like, but what about the lineup? So here it is for you. Um, something that I, I like, I do want to say though, is that, um, I do think that the way that some of us feel about the players is not always the same as the way that the coaching staff and McCall feel about the players. Um, I don't think Arteta is as fed up with Jesus and Zinni as maybe some of us are. And I also feel like maybe he likes Partey a little bit more than some of, some of us do like, or trust him a little bit more. I think that's the better way to, 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 to say it. So yeah, uh, Zinchenko coming back in now and starting ahead of Kivior, as much as it could be looked at just getting in minutes, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Zinchenko will start some games. I don't, you know, so um, be prepared. Be, be, be prepared. You know, I think Arteta likes, loves these players, trusts them. You know, West Ham held on for the win. Um, and so... That's why I'm kind of just like a little bit like, okay, what, how I feel about players is not always the same um, as everyone else, you know. Um, Gunnar Lee says we're winning. I hope so. Um, 3-1. I like, I mean, 3-1 sounds like a a very viable scoreline. But also, like, are Brighton, are they scoring a lot of goals right now? I'd love a clean sheet. Um, I'd love a clean sheet. Um, I know they're at home, but let's just look. At let's see what they're at home, what they're like. One nil against Nottingham Forest. One one against Everton. Just four to one against Crystal Palace. Nil nil at home against Wolves. So. There's not a lot of big score lines here. There's a lot of nil-nil draws, like whether they're home away. Um, 4-2, they beat Tottenham, So, and that was back in December. So, yeah, like, yeah, they probably are probably good for a goal, maybe, but our defense is so good. I'm kind of expecting a clean sheet. The only problem is probably we have somebody out there that tends to give like or be like the trigger point of a goal against so maybe it's more of like a 2-1 or a 3-1 like you said Goonerly. um abood says uh longest 30 minutes of my life 30 more minutes also people are in nash i love this um fan fest is in nashville i'm literally just watching like rebecca Lowe talking to the fans which is amazing um I love this. I love this for them. Like I went to a fan fest two years ago um, and it was in LA and I thought it was so much fun. So really happy for the fans that are out there. Um, they absolutely love it. Uh, fun, like it's not really a funny story, but I was, I was doing some work at like a preseason tournament for the NWSL 
And I saw Brandy Chastain sitting there and I wanted to get a picture with Brandy Chastain. She's my favorite uh, women's soccer player of like all time. And she was standing there and then I didn't even realize that Rebecca Lowe was standing right next to her. And so when she like lifted her head because she had like a floppy hat on, she lifted her head. I was like, oh my gosh, you're Rebecca Lowe. And she was like, I am. And I was like, oh, you're like, I just love you so much. Uh, you're such an inspiration. She was so sweet. And she actually took the picture of me and Brandy Chastain. So um, yeah, that's like my little story time. I, I love Rebecca Lowe. She's, she's so great. Um, the dude diary says we played really well last season. And a lot of that was due to Zinni's playing style. So getting him sharp gives us more options for every game. It's not a bad idea to give him game time. I don't think it is either. I think some people are just like very like over, I, not, I want to say overzealous, but I feel like for multiple reasons and some of those not being about what's going on on the pitch, do not want Zinchenko at the club anymore. So they're actively like pushing him out the door. I do feel like it's a little bit like, hold on, hold on, just wait a second. Zinchenko still has a lot to add. And when he's sharp, he's very useful on the ball, um, especially against like low blocks and stuff like that. So let's not just throw him away just yet. Like, obviously, summer conversations are different when we're talking about the summer transfer window. Then we're talking about different things. But from now until the end of the season, to pretend like Zinchenko doesn't have any value, just like even with Thomas Partey, even though I think that, like, you know, my overall feeling about him is that he's not fit enough and reliable enough for us to be relying upon him. So, you know, whatever. He still ha holds a lot of value to, to us from now until the end of the season. So we will be stupid not to give him minutes to get sharp. You know, so... Uh, yeah, I feel like you definitely have to give him some minutes for sure. Uh, the Arsenal perspective says, would like to see Jesus get some confidence with a goal. I would love to see Ben White also get a goal for recent performances. Saka and Odie is, uh, to also bang would be lovely. Rice to cook would, uh, two would be. I'm actually looking at Saka a little bit like, you know, I know that he's been dealing with some injury issues. You know, I know people will be like, it's fucking excuses. You always have excuses. But I mean, genuinely, if the club or like, you know, well-known journalists are saying that he's carrying an injury, I'm probably going to believe it because like there's no reason to lie really. Um, and I would imagine like when, so when Saka's fit, he plays well. When he's not fit, he doesn't. That's kind of the equation or when he's dealing with a little bit of something. But I'm hoping that he is like, you know, good enough to, kind of get a little bit of a flow going because, you know, the season has been kind of, despite like his numbers have been like really, really good. His, the season has been a little start and stop for him in terms of his form. It's kind of been a little bit of like a this, you know, he'll have two or three really good games and then fall off. He'll have a couple more good games and then fall off, you know? And I think that does have something to do with like a lack of fitness at certain times, but genuinely, if we're going to do anything, Saka and Martinelli have got to be ready to go. I think some of like our recent, like against Porto, against City, against uh, uh, Luton at times is a lack of like genuine quality on the wings. And um, without our wingers, we're not, we're definitely not the same team. And I know that that sounds like incredibly like obvious, but I feel like we just haven't had that dynamic wing play that we had consistently last season because Martinelli and Saka played every game. They were always there. They were always playing like with such intensity and sharpness that this season having Martinelli out for so much time and him not being sharp, same with Saka, like he's played, but he hasn't been sharp at times. We're losing that dynamism up front. And so, yeah, we're lacking pace, but like genuinely, if we're going to do anything, Martinelli and Saka have to be ready to go. And if, Martinelli can't go, then we need to find another solution. And maybe that's why Arteta is playing Jesus because as good as Trossard is, we know he needs to be in the box. Like, it, I honestly feel like they need to switch. Trossard needs to be the backup nine option and Jesus needs to be the backup wing option. Because Jesus, he, I think he can offer a little bit more on the wing than Trossard can, like in those wide positions. And Trossard is better at center forward, uh, you know, because he's actually going to score, you know. So, yeah, I feel... The like our our uh, attack these last couple of games has been a little blunt, and I feel like it's been blunted mostly because our wingers just haven't really been on it. They haven't been consistent. One has been good, the other has been not with no pace, no no dynamism, whatever. So I'm really hoping for a good wing performance from Saka and Jesus. We need it. Um, Lucas says uh, Brighton have pace on on the right to attack Zinni. Y'all, listen. 
I'm Zinchenko is gonna he's out there. You know, Rice is gonna have to help him out. Jesus will help have to help him out. Gabrielle is gonna have to help him out. I I don't know. You know, um, genuinely, every team when they see Zinchenko is gonna try to get onto that side and attack him. It's just about how we respond and like we should be winning still. You know, so I'm gonna try not to. Um, overthink it too much you know um i get i get like i feel like some people it's like um because they don't like zinchenko it's like but this is gonna happen but this is gonna happen like there's been a lot of times where zinchenko has been out there and nothing bad has happened so i'm hoping for one of those days jack lee says jesus just needs to find his shooting boots he can strike a ball well um would it be unpopular to say that it's not so much that i'm looking for him to find his shooting boots i just want him to be sharp and um be able to, you know, turn and burst past players and stuff like that. Because with Jesus, what I'm not, what I've kind of already foregone is I know he's not going to score a lot of goals. So that kind of is what it is. What I feel like he's really lacking is that sharpness, that his ability to like get past players and jink, 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 and, you know, hold it up and turn quick. Like we've, he's lost a lot of that this season, I think because of that knee injury. And so, yeah, I'm not really looking so much to the goal scoring aspect of of Jesus. I'm looking more towards like, can he get get that sharpness back? You know, and he's he's a you know, I, I've obviously I want him to score, but yeah, I'm not going to hold my breath about him just finding his shooting boots because even at his best, he's going to miss sitters. You know what I mean? Frank says maybe just a bit of fatigue. Got to trust Mikel. Um, Rancid says Rancid Pumpkin that that all like that name always makes me die. Um, Zinni has its flawless wait has his flaws, but he isn't that bad. Rancid Pumpkin is that like a rock band name or something? Like I just feel as though like I'm trying to look at the little the little profile and I'm like, is that like a rock band or something? Because like that would be an amazing name for a rock band. Rancid Pumpkin like. That sounds, you know, maybe it's just the name that you have, but um, I love that name. It makes me laugh all every single time I see it. Uh, Praveen says, um, when everyone is is fit, Zinni starts most of the games. His skill is unique. Um, the difference of opinion on Zinni is crazy. Like, it's not crazy, but it is very interesting to see how, you know, a bad run-in, you know, because I think also people are like, well, he can't defend, so he can't be in the back and whatever. But we were enjoying all the things that he was doing before the run-in last season. Zinni was one of our best players or one of our most like, wow, he really inspired us to this next level at the beginning of that season. But once that run-in hit, I'll tell you the moment where it was over for him. The moment that it was over for Zinchenko is when he got megged by Trent Alexander-Arnold. That is when the tide genuinely shifted on him. And then the Instagram story, and that was it. That was it because he had a couple of other like, you know, indiscretions in there where he like messed up, you know, where, you know, like, even this season where he's made mistakes. But I genuinely feel like that was the moment when he got megged by Alexander Arnold. That was it for the 2-2 because moments like that where your heart is breaking and you're seeing like your team capitulate or whatever, those moments stand out to you a lot more than other moments. So I feel like there was a lot of he got nutmegged and he got yanked out. Um, we drew two, two, we knew that the title was slipping away. Then everybody said he was crying on the sideline. You know, it was just like, that is a very like deep moment, you know, for a player to like, that's it. It's over. You know, people, they don't trust you anymore. It's done. And so, yeah, like I I've had moments like that with players where I just haven't been able to get over it. Like, I'm like, yeah, but that, that time where he did blank, you know? And I feel like that was the moment where the tide really shifted on him. And so Despite him being able to do so much on the ball, I don't think people will ever. It's like now we stop thinking about what he can do and only focus on what he can't do. Um, and that's when I always know like the tide is really shifted on a player is when they genuinely only focus on what they can't do and cannot see the positive in a player. Um, and it is what it is. You know, he's fallen down the pecking order and there's nothing wrong with that. Like we get better, things change, whatever. But he he genuinely does have some some unique skill sets that I don't feel like we're in a position at the moment to be scoffing at. Like we are not we're not that we're not there yet, you know. So 
yeah, let's see how let's see how how things go for him today. I'll say all this and then he'll he'll fuck up, you know, so <laughs> I, I know how this goes. I know how this goes. For those of you guys who are just joining, there's there's almost 200 of you guys in here, which I love. Pre-match vibes is always like just a chill show where we just kind of like get the nerves out. You know, we kind of say how we're feeling about the lineup and all that kind of stuff, kind of discuss the themes of the game. And then we're going to head over to TIFO football, um, which is the platform that I'm working with to create the perfect platform for uh, creators that want to do watch alongs. And so you guys can um, use the code Jessica to join um, the 200 of you guys that are in here. I would love to see a lot of you guys there for the watch along. So all you have to do is copy and paste the link that I have up on the screen. I also put it in the chat a couple of times. I'll put it there again. I will spam the chat myself so that you guys can see it, but copy and paste that link into your browser. And then it'll ask you to put in a code to join the watch along. And the code is simply Jessica, my name spelled J E S S I C A. We will head over there in probably about five to seven minutes. And I want to see you guys there. So make sure you guys join the watch along again, copy and paste that link, put in the code Jessica to join. And I will see you guys there because if I'm going to have to watch these games, I want y'all to have to watch them with me. Okay. So yeah. The Dude Diary says, absolutely agree with you, Jessica. Uh, but yeah, dude can't defend, but it's all right. He does so much that it's worth it. Most games, games where we can control the play. And I think that's a really super like important point to make is that it works most of the time. But there is a point in time where, and I, maybe we're still in that point too. I'm not quite sure because Zinchenko and Jesus haven't played that much. But what they were offering... Because both of them, their strengths come from what they do outside of the position that they're actually playing. So Zinchenko is not really like his best attributes are not what a left back would traditionally do. It's what a midfield midfielder would do. And I feel like Jesus is also very similar. Like his best attributes and what he offers of us at a false nine is not particularly the goal scoring. It's all the hard work and the dropping in and the creative parts, right? When they're not sharp, you kind of just want a left back and a striker, you know, when they're not fit, when they're not sharp, when they're not playing well, when they're out of form, you just, you start to just, okay, well, that's not working and we're not getting the benefit from it. So I just want a left back. I just want a striker. And so that's where like the likes of Kivior have come in and have given, I think like a comfort blanket there because he kind of just plays it like a left back. And then you have somebody like Kai, who is also not a traditional striker, but he plays the position more like a traditional one. And so it gives you that, that comfort. Whereas the highs of Zinni and Jesus are very, very high. But when they drop down even just 5%, you start to want whatever was supposed to be in that position to begin with. And we panic a little bit. Um, that being said, like they have a lot of quality that I still feel like we need to utilize. We can talk about whether or not we want to move, like what, what that looks like from the summer on. But Jesus and, and Zinchenko are quality players, you know. Hadi says, it's not one, one time with Zinchenko. It's almost every game. Sure, maybe it's almost every game, but again, we weren't complaining last season when we were he was make he made some of those mistakes, but he was sharp and what he was doing was adding a lot of value to the team. So, whether it's every single game or every other game, it's it's genuinely not every single game. I think people are over like exaggerating. But um yeah, it's it's just one of those where it's like we only focus on that. That's all people focus on is the mistakes and the fact that they don't like his politics, whatever, that's all they focus on. They genuinely cannot see anything good that he does anymore. And that's how, it, like, the tide is just genuinely shift. It just shifted, just like that. Jack Lee says, Jesus has that but of bit of quality to make something out of nothing, but he also has the quality to make nothing out of something. Period. Make uh, nothing out of something. You are uh, you are so spot on with that. There are just moments where I'm just like, you just hit through the ball, please. You know. So, yeah, that's a really really good point. PTM says any members of um, the watch along in the chat, members of Wahai Song, any members of in the chat. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. I don't know what that is. Previn says, because Zinni expressed his political views, some fans turned against him. And not to go into that, but that to me, that's that's super true. Um, you know, and so hopefully he has a good game today. Again, he's still an Arsenal player. So 
I'm always going to hope that every Arsenal player has a good game, no matter what. Let's be serious. Like, we need to win the game. And so I get that there's, like, um, like an uneasiness. I'm seeing people say I'm uneasy with the lineup. To be honest, I'm uneasy with the lineup probably means Zinchenko's playing. So, yeah. Um, so there you go. Um, let's see. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. You guys, I'm going to go ahead and hop on over to the watch along. So, um, yeah, because it's going to start in 30 seconds. So, obviously, I want to see you guys there. Make sure you guys are um, joining. Uh, let me actually look at the poll because I did a poll to let you guys, you know, I was like, listen, are you guys coming or not? You know, don't leave me there by myself. Um, but 50 or I had 99 votes and I said, did you sign up for the watch along? About 57% of you guys said yes. And 43% of you guys said I'm doing it now. So um, hopefully I see you guys there. I'm going to switch over now and I'm starting to get nervous and uh, make sure you guys like and subscribe on your way out of this stream. And if I stop the stream and you guys are still watching um, and you guys are like, where can I find the the link or whatever? It's still going to be in the chat for you to copy and paste, but it's also um, in the description box. So I should see you guys there. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys. Or in just a couple of minutes. Like, subscribe. Bye.